All right, welcome back to Guru Pinoy. Again, we would like to welcome back the members of Team Peche. If you are a member, you can answer our quizzes. You can watch the full-length video. Then, of course, you can download all the PowerPoint presentation that we have. And, of course, you have answered our pre-board. And, of course, itong final coaching ninyo ay libre para po sa members ng ating Team Peche. So, again, if you are still not a member of Team Peche, magpa-member na po kayo. Just send a message to our Facebook page. That's Guru Pinoy. Your membership is valid until September of this year. So again, habol na po kayo sa mag mga magtitake no, ng September na let. Pupwede, pupwede pa po kayo maging member ng Team Piaché. Now, tonight's discussion is centered on general education. This is the fourth installment, the fourth final coaching for general education for those of you who will be taking your June 2022 licensure exam for teachers. But before anything else, of course, let's all start with our opening prayer. We thank you for this new day, Lord. Help us to embrace all that it may hold for us, to hear the bird song and have new melodies in our hearts, to see the sunrise and create beauty with our hands, to touch the leaves that grow afresh and allow your love to touch our hearts, to smell the fragrance of the flowers and breathe in the wonder of your creation, to dwell on the beauty of our world and study and fathom your miracles, to enjoy the conversations we have and the lessons we go to, may we drink in all the goodness you have for us. Amen. All right, so once again, as I have mentioned, this is general education, the fourth installment of our final coaching. All the things that we are going to discuss all came from March 2022, others from January 2022 licensure exam for teachers. This is another pre-recorded video. As you know, I have given birth, and so this video is pre-recorded, but still you can interact with me now, so you can still send your, your answer, put them in your chat box so that uh, we'd still feel as if it's a live stream. Okay, so general education po tayo ngayon, please do like, love, and share this video. Napaka-importante that, again, you're liking, you're loving, you're sharing our videos so that we can reach out to more people. And of course, you can so also support us by sending us stars on Facebook and Super Chat Super Stickers or Super Thank Yous on YouTube. Maraming maraming salamat po for all our star senders. At ganun din sa ating mga Super Chatters, no? Super Sticker Senders. Again, please do like, love, and share this video. Those who are liking, loving, and share this video will definitely pass the licensure exam for teachers this coming June. Okay, so paki like, love, and share na po ng ating video. We start with question number one. Okay, now you are given two sentences here, no? So, ang original is Pia walked the ramp with her dignity and grace amidst a loud applause. While the salin, ang salin ay Pia brought the house down with her dignity and grace. Ito ay pagsaling patlang. Is this letter A literal, letter B conventional, letter C idiomatiko, or letter D sinadya? Okay, what is your choice for number one? So again, you are given two sentences. The sentences are actually in English. But the question is, anong klase ng pagsalin ito sa Filipino? Okay, so you are given the original sentence, Pia walked the ramp with her dignity and grace amidst a loud applause. At ang salin nito ay, Pia brought the house down with her dignity and grace. Okay, so ito ay, anong klase ng pagsalin? Ito ba ay literal, konbensyonal, idiomatiko, or sinadya? Okay, please put your answer in our comment box. Again, pakilagay po ng inyong answer sa ating comment box. Okay, please do participate. Again, please do like, love, share this video so that we can reach out to more people. Okay, what's your choice for question number one? Okay, number one, what do you think is the best choice? Okay. 
All right, so going back to question number one, Pia walked the ramp with her dignity and grace amidst a loud applause. That's the original sentence. And ang salin ay Pia brought the house down, brought the house down with her dignity and grace. Ito ay pagsaling, literal, conventional, idiomatiko, or sinadya. Tinan muna natin yung mga iba't ibang pagsasalin. No? So ito yung iba't ibang metodo ng pagsasalin. Yung unang-una ay sansalita, bawat sansalita. Ang ibig sabihin nito ay word for word translation or what we call verbatim. No? So, for example, you have John gave me an apple. So, yung salin to sa Filipino would be si Juan ay nagbigay sa akin ng mansana. So, word for word. Napaka-literal din. No? Although, hindi siya tinatawag na literal. Meron din kasi isang klase ng pagsasalin na literal talaga yung term. Okay? So, sansalita, bawat sansalita is word for word translation or what we call verbatim. Now, number two, literal. Ang pangunahing katuturan, the primary sense ng salita, ang binibigay ng, binibigyan ng panumbas. For example, you have, my father is a fox farmer, that is, he raised silver foxes in pens, and in the fall and early winter, when their fur was prime, he killed them and skinned them. Okay, so yung salin niya ay, ang tatay ko isang magsasaka ng lobo, iyon, siya ay nagpapalaking mga, nagpapalaking ng mga lobong pilak. At sa taglagas at maagang taglamig, kung ang kanilang balahibo ay pinakamataas, siya ay pinapatay uh, siya ay pinapatay sila at binabalatan sila. Okay? So, literal na pagsalin. Kasi dito sa inyong sansalita, bawat salita, po pwedeng meron kang mga dinagdag. No? So, John gave me an apple, si Juan nagbigay ng mansanas. Okay? So, ito binigyan mo, nag, nagbigay sa akin ng mansanas. Halos magkaparehas sila ng literal, ng no? inyong sansalita, bawat salita. Okay? So, Ang primary sense yung pinaka panumbas na ginagawa dito, yung primary sense yung pinaka tinututukan. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng salita? No? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng pangungusap? Okay, so almost the same siya as your sansalita bawat sal sansalita. Okay, number three, semantico. You already know semantico means uh, meaning, di ba? Semantics. Binibigyan din ang estetiko ng tunog, pagiging natural. Ang mga kulturang, kulturang salita ay hindi gaano binibigyan. bigang diin. Pinahihintulutan dito ang maipasok na nagsasalin ang kanyang sariling pananaw. No? So, uh, tinatawag siyang semantiko dahil yung nagsasalin mismo ay merong uh, kakayahan at merong Uh, chance no meron siyang meron siyang chance na magbigay ng kanyang sariling pananaw no so ano yung meaning para sa kanya kaya siya semantics yung tinawag no so meaning or semantiko idiomatiko ang mensaheng original or original ay sinasalin sa paraang magiging madulas at natural ang daloy ng Uh, pangungusap no so ng ng pangungusap ito dapat ginagamit dito ang idiomang TW at sadyang Nagiging iba ang forma ng pahayag, ngunit ipinapahayag ang mensahe sa paraang kawili-wiling basahin. For example, you have bread and butter at ito ay nangangahulugang hanap buhay at trabaho. So that means you are using idioms no? so para maging kawili-wili ang pagbasa. Okay, so ang pagbasa ng inyong um, sinulat ay maging kawili-wili although yung mensahe ay original. Okay, so ang mensahe original ay sinasalin para maging kawili-wili yan ang inyong idiomatiko. Now you also have adaptation. Itinuturing na pinakamalayang anyong salin dahil may pagkakataon na malayo na ito sa original na pinakamalaya. Kadalasan ginagamit ito sa salin ng awit, tula at dula. So if you have the terms awit, tula, tula at dula sa inyong question, your answer would be adaptasyon. No? So for example, you have que sera sera, whatever will be will be. The future is not ours to see, que sera sera. Ang salin nito ay ay sirang sira. Okay, so ay sirang sira. Napakalayo naman ng ay sirang sira sa que sera sera. No? Que sera sera kasi eh, whatever will be will be yung meaning niya. Ano ang mangyayari? Di makikita ang bukas, ay sirang sira. Sira. Okay, so this is adaptasyon, ginagamit for your awit, tula at dula. Malaya naman, wala kang kontrol. Okay, kaya siya tinawag na malaya. At parang hindi na isa, isang salin, may pagdadagdag or pagbabawas sa mga salita. For example, for the last 20 years, since he is borrowed into one apartment, into one room apartment near Baclaran Church, Francisco Buda, often strolled to... the seawall and down the stone breakwater which stretched from 
sandy bar into the murky and oil tinted bay. Ang sali niya ay mayroon ng dalawampung taon siyang tumira sa isang apartment na malapit sa simbahan ng baklaran. Si Francisco Buda ay mahilig maglibang sa breakwater na mabuhangin at malangis. Okay, so halos uh, walang control. No? Merong mga dinadagdag, merong binabawas sa mga salita sa inyong malaya. Okay, so ito po yung mga iba't ibang metodo ng pagsali natin. At ito yung last, no? komunikatibo. Ito ay ang pagtatangkang magbigay pag pakahulugan sa nilalaman sa paraang katanggap-tanggap at nauunawaan ng mababasa. Sa komunikatibo naman, yung inyong focus is yung nagbabasa. No? Dapat eh, maunawaan niya kung ano yung inyong sinalin. Okay? So katanggap-tanggap at nauunawaan ng inyong mababasa. Hey, okay, going back to the question that you have here. Original at salin, original. Pia walked the ramp with her dignity and grace amidst a loud applause. Salin, Pia brought the house down with her dignity and grace. Ito ay pagsasaling, literal. Again, remember, literal is halos uh, parehas ng sansalita, no? word for word. The same dapat. Conventional, idiomatico, or sinadya. Ang correct choice here, of course, should be letter C, idiomatico. So, imbes na gina ginamit mo yung dignity and grace, or ginamit mo yung Pia walk the ramp amidst a loud applause, your, your salin is Pia brought the house down. Okay, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng when you bring the house down, that means uh, you've made an impact. Okay, so naging napakaganda ng inyong performance. No? So amidst a loud applause. So letter C, idiomatico, ang ating tumpak na choice dito. Okay, napakahirap ng Filipino. Alright, number two, tinapos ng ina ang gawaing bahay. Ang pandiwa sa pangungusap ay nasa aspeto. Letter A, pang hinaharap. Letter B, pang nagdaan. Letter C, pang kasalukuyan. Or letter D, perpektibo. Okay, ano ang ating choice? Okay, what is your choice for number two? Okay, going back to question number two. Tinapos ng ina ang gawaing bahay. Ang pandiwa sa pangungusap ay nasa aspeto. Letter A, pang hinaharap. Letter B, pang nagdaan. Letter C, pang kasalukuyan. Or letter D, perpektibo. What's your choice for number two? Okay, going back to question number two here, your answer should be letter D, perpektibo. Tapos na, no? So, uh, when you say perpektibo, tapos na yung inyong sinimulang gawain. Okay, so natapos ang sinimulang kilos, natapos ang sinimulang gawain. Halos makapareha sila ng pang nagdaan, no? Pang nagdaan mo is past. 
Okay? So, when you say uh, pang nagdaan naman, kakatapos lamang. Yung perspektibo mo kasi, it stresses that you started it uh, from a time, no? From you, you started it and tinapos mo siya. Kasi yung pinaka-word mo dito ay tinapos, no? So, yung sinimulang gawain ay yung tinapos. And so, your um, correct choice here, yung mas magandang choice mo would be perspektibo. Perspektibo. Yung pang nagdaan kasi maaaring natapos na siya a long time ago. Okay, so it's not something that you have just started from a while ago at tinapos mo, kundi yung pag nagdaan mo, maaaring natapos na siya from a year back, from two weeks back, a month back, okay? Now, pang hinaharap, of course, that's future and pang kasalukuyan, that's present tense, okay? So, perpektibo po yung ating hinahanap. Again, when you say perpektibo, natapos na ang inyong sinimulang gawain, okay? So, tinapos niya ang kanyang gawain bahay ngayon-ngayon lamang, no? Nagsimula siya at tinapos niya ngayon-ngayon lamang. So, perpektibo ang ating choice for number two. Number three, uri, uri ng bantas na ginagamit sa paghihiwalay na magkakasunod-sunod, magkakasunod na sugnay ay letter A, tuldok, letter B, kuwet, letter C, tuldok, kuwet, or letter D, tutuldok. Okay, what's your answer? For letter, or for number three. Uri ng bantas, no, your uh, punctuation na ginagamit sa paghihiwalay ng mga magkakasunod-sunod, magkakasunod na sugnay. When you say sugnay, ito ay clause. Okay? Clause pa yung sugnay or phrase. Okay, so clause, tama, no, yung sugnay mo ay clause. Okay, so ano yung choice mo dito? Kung ikaw ay may mga clause na magkakasunod-sunod at gusto mo silang paghiwalayin, ano ang uri ng bantas na iyong ginagamit? Okay, what is your choice for question number three? Ano po ang ating choice for number three? Okay, for number three here, the correct choice would be letter B, kuwet, no, magkakasunod-sunod na sugnay, yung lipo ng inyong mga salita. Hindi kasi natin alam kung yung sugnay mo dito ay nakapag-iisa or hindi nakapag-iisa. No? Kung ang mga sugnay mo ay nakapag-iisa, that means independent clauses, po pwede mong gamitan ng tuldok kuwet. Okay? Pero hindi natin alam na hindi natin sure kung anong, anong klase ng sugnay meron tayo dito. So yung safest choice mo would be kuwet. Okay, so letter B, kuwet. Uh, we would consider sugnay here as just um, a group of words. Okay, so grupo ng mga salita. No? So letter B, kuwet is your choice. Now your tuldok, you know what your tuldok is in English? This is your period. Tuldok kuwet, this is your semicolon. And tutuldok, that's your colon. No? So puntahan natin yung gamit ng tuldok kuwet at tutuldok. Okay, so tuldok kuwet mo naman ay ginagamit sa pagitan ng mga magka, magkaugnay ng mga mahahalagang sangkap ng isang mahabang pangungusap. No? So if you have a long sentence and they have um, the, the ideas, no? the ideas that are very important, most especially if you have independent clauses na sugnay na nakapag-iisa, meron kang dalawang ideya at gusto mong hatiin no? sa gitna yung dalawang mong ideya, ginagamit mo yung tuldok kuwet. Okay? So that's tuldok kuwet. Now, tuldok-tuldok, 
Ang tutuldok-tuldok ay elepsis at ito ay nagpapahiwatig na kusang ibinitin na nagsasalita ang karugtong na nais na sabihin. Okay, so tutuldok-tuldok ito. Yung ating choice na isa kanina ay tutuldok, no? that's your colon. Usually yung colon mo would be used for a list. For example, you say... Um, Um, before a list, no, bago yung isang listahan, isang isang lista. For example, you say, ako ay bumili ng maraming iba't ibang klaseng prutas. Uh, tutuldok, colon, no? So, tutuldok, uh, mansanas, saging, okay? So, and then you enumerate, okay? So, that's tutuldok. Tutuldok, tuldok is different, no? That's ellipsis, okay? But then again, we're looking for kuwet for number three. Number four. Ang pagsasalin wikang technical ay gamit sa patlang. Okay, ito ay nakita na natin bilang isa sa ating mga tanong in our previous live stream. Is this uh, used in pantikan, letter B, agham, letter C, kasaysayan, or letter D, kultura? Kailan natin ginagamit ang pagsasalin wikang technical, very technical. So usually you just borrow Uh, the different terms, no, as is yung pag, paggamit mo ng mga salita, wala ka kasing sariling salin, no, walang direktang salin ang mga salita minsan. Okay, so when do you use your technical na pagsasaling wika? Is this letter A, panitikan, letter B, agham, letter C, kasaysayan, or letter D, kultura? What's your choice? Okay, what is our choice for question number four? Technical na pagsasaling wika, meron na tayong ganitong tanong, reverse lang no yung tanong natin last time. Binigyan ka ng itong iba't ibang uri at anong klase ng pagsasaling wika yung inyong ginamit. Okay? So, yung choice mo doon was technical. So, ito naman, binaliktad lang yung inyong tanong. Ang pagsasaling wikang technical ay gamit sa Ang correct choice mo dito, of course, should be letter B, agham no in science, in research, in math, for example. Okay, you would be using your technical na translation. Okay, so technical. Marami kang technical terms na walang direktang salin sa Filipino. Okay, again, yung kasaysayan at kultura halos magkaparehas sila. Okay, so yung pantikan mo naman, ito yung mga mabulaklaking pananalita. No? You don't use this for um, for science. Okay, you use technical sa agham. Okay, so number four is letter B, agham po ang ating tumpak na choice. Number five, which religious missionaries first arrived in the Philippines? Is it letter A, Franciscans, letter B, Augustinians, letter C, Jesuits, or letter D, Dominicans? This is a very common question in the Latin social science. What's your choice for number five? Okay, again, what is your choice for question number five? Which religious missionaries first arrived in the Philippines? Sino yung unang-unang religious missionary yung dumating sa Pilipinas? Okay, ang tumpak na choice mo dito, of course, would be letter B, Augustinians. Okay, so according to the order, nauna yung Augustinians mo, and then followed by your Franciscans, then Jesuits, then Dominicans, then the Recoletos, no So memorize, i-memorize nyo itong order. No? So F, J, D, R. Augustinians, Franciscans, Jesuits, Dominicans, and followed by the last one, Recoletos. So letter B, Augustinians po ang ating tumpak na choice. Number six. Anong bahagi ng pananalita ang gamit ng nasa malaking titik? Siya ay huwarang mag-aaral. Ito ba ay isang panghalip? Ito ba ay isang pangalan, pandiwa, or pang